And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters for today's program, Madja Fedorka and Adam Richman. Madja and Adam are two activists who organized various political and community organizing efforts in the 1980s and early 1990s in Sonoma County. Madja was the organizer of the first national coming out day event in Sonoma County in 1988, and we'll describe that event. Madja and Adam will also describe the context that national coming out day took place in, both nationally and here in Sonoma County. They worked closely together, first on the fight to defeat the LaRouche AIDS initiative in 1986, which promised to create lists of HIV positive individuals and threatened to create quarantine camps. Other efforts included the campaign to get the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors to pass a lesbian and gay Pride Week resolution, which succeeded finally in 1992. And now I'll turn it over to them. Magi, you are up. Okay, so an overview of, uh, we will probably talk about 45 minutes and then there will be about a 10 minute Q&A time. Feel free to use the chat uh, and then we'll end it with a uh, closing with uh, a little wish list and uh, some feedback time. Right at this moment, I'd really like to acknowledge all of Sonoma County Library uh, as you heard from their in introduction, they are on a mission to be inclusive, and that includes LGBTQI. The website was awesome. Um, we have here on this slide a picture of the historic icons, uh, and I encourage you to look at all these people. I went and read it. I was so impressed with how much depth they were able to do and how efficiently they did it. So Javier, you've been a joy and a pleasure to work with. Um, Zonda Delgado, uh, Edie uh, Dawson and Lauren Carr and anyone else on the team, please say thank you. Um, we looked at this site uh, multiple times and appreciate how uh, diverse it is because it shows that we've been here throughout time. LGBTQ is part of the fabric of human life. So I wanna thank you for that. And I also wanna say, I hope this list, this, since we do wish lists, I hope this list gets expanded. You're not gonna be able to see what I'm gonna hold up because I'm just gonna be a tiny little picture here. But I have a, a press Democrat, from March 10th, 2019, that it lists first for LGBTQ, and it has our first uh, many Sonoma County community members have broken barriers over the years. And that's what today's presentation is about. Many people have made a presentation or have made a difference. Um, and we want to acknowledge all that have come before us. Next slide. Yeah. So um, I want to give a special thanks to um, Chad Reinstein and Tina Duncan, who have been very active in creating an important um, timeline uh, for the LGBTQI community here in uh, Sonoma County and really kind of spurred, or one of the people, uh, two of the people have really in inspired us to. Uh, keep going. So Tina, Magi and I meet almost every week to talk about history issues and our names, um, a little collective, um, but um, I just, we just want to give a special shout out to uh, Shad and Tina in particular. With thanks so, to them, the, um, the Women's Support Network uh, helps sponsor uh, the two of them, as well as the lesbian, gay, LGBTQI um, pride committee helped bring that timeline into play. Okay, so, um, so this is a bit of an overview. Um, here's just some uh, early, you know, from the 50s to 1977, um, things really changed in 78. So we have a lesbian, owned bar that was in Forestville called the Vu Carre. And uh, that was, uh, the building still exists. It's on 116 in between like uh, Guerinville and Forestville. Um, some of you may recognize Waller Beach. 
the Santa Rosa Inn, the Women's Co-op Garage, the uh, Sonoma County Women's Music Festival, and uh, several other things. So um, just some historic markers in the community. Okay, Madra? Okay, we called it in 1988, coming out 88, because coming out was, well, for some people, they were newly out, some people were partially out, and other people had already been living life so openly that they are forever out. And so we didn't call it coming out day. What we uh, made the theme of was memorabilia. And in talking about memorabilia, we asked people to look in their closets. We asked people to look wherever they have, wear whatever they have, um, I'll talk more about that as we get down, but today, um, as we get to coming out day, we want to acknowledge so many people were part of making it so that we have a national coming out day, and the first year was 1988. There are many, many important stories that we hope will um, be unfolded uh, in the near future so that uh, more people are represented and that we get our stories told. Next slide. Revisiting, uh, we put this definition there. It's to look back and consider something again, especially with the possibility of seeing it from a different perspective. Um, and we might change or even reverse what we were thinking. Back in the day, um, People collected stuff, and Adam, Tina, and I are people who now have collections uh, that were some of our own and some uh, belong to other people, but they haven't been archived. And um, this time that we're talking about, 1988, we're talking about 30 plus years ago. And during that time period, it wasn't practical. Um, given all that was going on during that time, including a viral uh, pandemic, AIDS and HIV, uh, the homophobic backlash, the lack of rights, how many people were in a position um, to actually collect things, never mind figure out how to do an archives on it. The archives was brought up in 1988. Uh, the question today is it practical today to do a community archive? There are individuals who've gotten their items archived and we have uh, Sonoma County uh, Lesbian um, Archives uh, who's taken the lead on this. Uh, they started their archives in 2007. So they can maybe help get us in uh, the direction of doing a community LGBTQI kind of archives. Um, next slide. LGBTQ History Month is October. And when I mentioned uh, that to somebody, they said to me, why October? October has everything to do with 1987 was uh, the second March on Washington. It was a pivotal year. We'll touch on that in a few minutes. Before that, in 19. 79 was the first March on Washington in October, like October 14th. Um, so when they were being proactive about talking about LGBTQ history, they looked at the significance of October. We now have a spirit day tomorrow, um, wear your purple tomorrow. Uh, we're uh, anti-bullying and so forth is the significance of the day. It's also the anniversary of um, the death of uh, Shepard and uh, the bill that went forward to um, prevent uh, and make uh, LGBTQ uh, crimes, hate crimes. So there's a lot of things that happen in October and October is an awesome time to meet and, and prepare because many years we have been in reactive mode in October because whatever was on the ballot, we were um, trying to stop or we were trying to promote. So it was the very activist month uh, of October. One last thing I wanna say about 
uh, LGBTQ History Month. We now have in California as of 2000, the year 2000, a Fair Education Act. And the Fair Education Act is about getting LGBTQ history on an even playing field with everybody else who is represented in history. California was the first one to get this approved. Um, 2018, a couple more states, and now uh, 2019 or so, a couple more say there are six states that have LGBTQ history going into K through eight curriculum. We would very much like um, to acknowledge Don Romsberg from Sonoma State University, he is working on that curriculum that is appropriate about LGBT, LGBTQIA plus community being part of social studies for um, our education system. So uh, it was founded in 94. Obviously, the history goes back. Next slide. So um, I just wanted to say a few things about the Cox for, um, you know, just what happened in Sonoma County in the 70s and uh, coming out specifically. Um, Harvey Milk uh, was, uh, from, I'm sure for most of us know, but for those of us who don't, um, he was the first California elected official. Um, he, uh, that was openly gay and he um, won that election in 1977 and he was assassinated um, just over a year later in 1978. So that was, um, he was an important figure. He ran for supervisor for several years. He became well known. And uh, one of the things he became well known for was his urge to come out, come out wherever you are. And I just wanna read this quote from a speech of his that says, gay people, we will not win our rights by staying quietly in our closets. We are coming out to fight the lies the myths, the distortions. We are coming out to tell the truths about gays for I'm tired of the conspiracy of silence. So I'm going to talk about it and I want you to talk about it. You must come out. So that was uh, very timely at that point. And um, his, his we'll talk about kind of the long arm of his work um, in a minute, but um, next, um, Magi is going to talk about uh, some of these organizations. The organizations, uh, I want you to know they all represent people. So these are thousands of people in Sonoma County uh, through this time period who were active, engaged, involved. Uh, we had to come up with a list when we did the 1988 uh, coming out presentation. We sent out a mailer. And this was the list that we had at that time in 88. It is not an all-inclusive list. There are many other underrepresented uh, folks. But this is what we were asking for in the way of memorabilia. And look at the diversity of this group. We have college groups, SRJC, SSU, um, both active and have lots of stories to tell. Uh, some of that is hopefully in the SRJC and Sonoma State University archives at this point, we hope. Um, Solar nerds, um, uh, there were people active in Forward Together who were members of these groups uh, in celebration of life, uh, a huge important aspect of our community is uh, the sobriety movement that was huge um, during those years. Uh, Sonoma State uh, University's Women's Studies who went out of their way to be inclusive and have um, lectures, classes that included uh, the lesbian, gay community, LGBTQI+. Um, Veterans Care came into being in uh, 19... 88, but there is a long history of having to do with the military and people being put out of the military with dishonorable or a, a less than honorable discharge. And uh, some of them worked very hard to get some of those uh, dishonorables reversed and get honorable discharges. And there was a huge movement for people to be openly who they are during this time period. It was don't ask, don't tell came up and that was pretty awful when uh, that 
was something they then had to take on that fight too. This month at the river, the paper, women's voices, face-to-face, -face, women in touch, forward together, country people's warehouse resorts. We had a number of resorts that came into being in the early 1970s into the 70s. They brought a whole level, another level of economic um, contribution by the LGBTQI plus uh, community. They also brought a place for people to come from all over the world. And so we started having people who came and said, oh, this is a great place to live. Not only do we have a university college education friendliness, we have business friendliness, we have organizations here and people made Sonoma County their home after coming to visit uh, and finding it was a friendly place. Uh, the Pit Stop Moonrise Cafe had groups and activities, uh, support of the community there, Gertie's. The women's bookstores were central places for information, community gatherings, uh, workshops, presentations, promoting um, the diversity of our community. Claire Light Books um, went out of their way to not only have uh, speakers and presentations, uh, but highlighting uh, our, our past, our future, uh, our current philosophical uh, thoughts. Uh, lesbian gay sports were very active. Uh, women's softball, uh, the rodeo that we had out in Guerneville, um, the skate night, uh, go roller skating, you, it was active. Scrap 64 was in response, and we'll talk about that. Um, Can was part of 64. We'll talk about that. No one's 69. Adam will address that. Brown Bag Reader Theater was a theater group that took it to the next level um, and uh, traveled, uh, not just in Sonoma County. They went uh, statewide with some of their traveling. I'm, that Lip Reader Theater, the talent, the contribution, the generosity of these people to all um, put things. We will talk a little bit more about Lesbian Voters Action Caucus. They, powerful group, they made a difference on so many levels. We, we wanted to give them a special uh, shout out to their uh, contributions. Lesbian Gay Resource Network came into being after Scrap 6 and they continued um, to do good work. One of the things about the Lesbian Gay Resource Network is that they put out a directory in 1980 during that um, time, it was wonderful to have an educational resource, and they were already forward thinking about history. They were forward thinking about um, calling for a lesbian and gay pride uh, parade. That was in that 1980 uh, publication. So it was very cool. Um, forward together. Also, uh, I'll, I need to stop. I'm running out of time. So next slide. So this is mine too. Um, Sonoma County Residents Against Proposition 6 in uh, that year, and I can't really show you this, but there was this incredible response to the outing of a teacher in Hillsburg. In Hillsburg, they put out a big uh, sheet of paper. You can't possibly see this, but I'm holding it up anyway. Uh, Hillsburg uh, parents support gay teachers. The teacher was Larry Burner. He was outed. Um, there was a, a big hoo-ha about it, but this is letter after letter to the press Democrats, starting with a May 18th letter. By May 23rd of that year, there were 30 people at the Sonoma uh, County Teachers Association, California Teachers Association had a union building on Guerneville Road. There were 30 people there on the 23rd of May, and they um, put together this, Sonoma County Residents Against Proposition 6. They went door to door. Talk about being out, coming out. They went door to door. That was how coming out uh, was done in that day. Um, with scripts of men and women going door to door in Sonoma County and other counties uh, as well, Napa County and others counties did the same thing. 
but scrap 64 turned the page and brought coming out as part of uh, this. And the coming out included allies, advocates, our allies who were not just friendly and supportive, they gave us that teachers association uh, building that summer and people got on the phones. We had phone lines going, we had um, documentations, literature, you name it. It was a all out effort. And the people um, even had a interview with the homophobic uh, Briggs. And there was a video, if anybody has this video, we have a call out for this. At memorabilia in 1988, we showed the video of the interview with Sandy Lowe, Claudia Newberg, and um, the former Senator uh, Briggs that took place in Sonoma County. Awesome, pivotal point in our county of activism and the level of being out and working across the LGBTQ spectrum that included lots of friends, allies, family. Next slide. Post uh, six, I've alluded to this a little bit. Um, Sonoma County Lesbian and Gay Allowance, uh, of the alliance was both um, lesbians and gays. And in here, they talk about uh, lots of uh, different kinds of relations and supportive things. The irony of this one is July, August of 1979, they are, have a teacher who files a suit against John Briggs. Um, and so they uh, did quite a bit of work uh, in those two years. And the directory talked about how many support groups were going on for people who were currently married, partially out, people with children, uh, the, the parents groups, uh, the support not only in Sonoma County, they included the support outside of the county so that we got a national and international look at things that were included in this um, news paper. So next slide. Is this yours, Adam? Can I, Adam, is this yours? Hello? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so, so um, Basically, um, sorry about the delay. Uh, coming Out Day, you know, has uh, many years of culmination. Um, and one of the first major political expressions of the burgeoning lesbian, gay, bi, and trans movement was the National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights. And that was in 1979. I was fortunate to uh, be a participant in that. It was uh, a huge deal. And it was uh, in Washington. I don't have a statistic on how many people were there, but I recall it being about 100,000. Uh, there were two other national marches later on uh, that uh, increased exponentially. Uh, we'll talk about those uh, later. Um, so this, this march was part of Harvey Milk's vision for a national lesbian and gay specific um, political movement uh, to move things forward. Sadly, he wasn't able to participate because he had been assassinated the year before. Um, this, we're gonna jump ahead a few years. Um, in 1986, this is when um, things really uh, changed in Sonoma County. Um, uh, Sonoma County's lesbian, gay, bi, and trans um, movements, and in particular lesbian and gay, um, and then the HIV community, um, really played an outsized role um, in political activity compared to other rural suburban counties. And uh, there are a number of reasons for that, um, but one of the, the first in this revival of uh, lesbian and gay um, uh, political activity uh, was now on 64. Um, there was an AIDS quarantine initiative um, that um, got onto the ballot and it was uh, 
schedule. It was predicted to win. So April would um, be excluded from teaching positions and then, you know, restaurant positions and things like that uh, on the false premise that HIV was a airborne or mosquito-borne uh, condition. And um, it was sponsored by a crazy um, fringe politician named Lyndon LaRouche. Um, and so we were able to achieve um, really great things. We got a higher than average of others, uh, Bay Area, suburban and uh, rural communities, a higher no on 64 vote. And there were two campaigns in the county. Um, I was associated with the, net, the statewide uh, campaign and I was a liaison to the Sonoma County residents against uh, Proposition 64, which is basically in Santa Rosa and the Stop LaRouche Community Action Network, which had a more countywide reach, but was also more um, based in the West County. Okay, moving on. Um, so um, Forward Together came out immediately after uh, the No N64 campaign won. There was a pre-meeting at the end of 1986 to rally um, activists who had been act, you know, it, from the No N64 campaign. And then in uh, January, the still yet named Forward Together was founded um, and it became the, the first in many years, both male and female, um, directed and oriented um, political and community building effort. It really was a um, watershed moment, probably easily 30 organizations came out of uh, Forward Together. It kind of raised the water for all the boats uh, out there. Everything from potlucks to political action came out of this thing. And so I was, I was personally involved, as was Magi, uh, in a lot of the political organizing, and um, that took a number of forms. So Magi, you are on. Okay, Pride Resolution. It came in 1987 that uh, there were so many people involved with Forward Together and so many other people doing things that uh, they came to Forward Together and asked us to do um, something uh, for a gathering that was happening in Guerneville. And so we were responding, reacting to a community need. And 13 people went to meet with two uh, supervisors, supervisors Ernie Carpenter and supervisor Helen Rudy. And um, I thought to myself, well, you know, okay, here we are again, reacting to uh, a community need. How about if we ask the supervisors for something? After all, this is a, a community, we're a diverse community, we contribute and so forth. Why can't we have a proclamation that proclaims uh, Sonoma County lesbian and gay pride? And so I went to the Commission of Status of Women and got their proclamation, redrafted it, and on the day, the 13 of us representing different groups uh, in Sonoma County, I handed the uh, draft proclamation. Um, I drafted it, I sent it, uh, handed it over to Ernie Carpenter and Helen Rudy and say, you know, uh, could you do this? And um, they didn't say anything to the group of 13 who were there that day, but it never went on. No, no, they weren't going to put it on the agenda. So it never even made it to the Sonoma County Supervisor agenda in 1987. But what it did was it unified us as a community in a way that I'm not sure anything else could have. Uh, there were people who went in 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. Um, they repeatedly went back to the Board of Supervisors saying, hey, um, we contribute. We contribute economically, socially. We contribute, uh, we bring history, we bring um, all kinds of resources of arts and, uh, you know, we bring it in Sonoma County. We are part of the fabric of Sonoma County. Why in the world would the Board of Supervisors not acknowledge another contributing group? Uh, no different than 
other groups that contribute. So it was incredibly unifying. There were at times at the Board of Supervisors, 200 plus people in the Board of Supervisors, our community, people who would not go to a Pride Day would come to this proclamation. Speaker after speaker, there were years where we had multiple speakers. You can't see it, but I'm actually holding up two VHS uh, that I have. And one of them is by Channel 50 in 1991. Uh, they covered the Board of Supervisors meeting when we went and speaker after speaker uh, went up and spoke about why we are community and um, how important it is, is to acknowledge people who contribute. Um, so it finally sort of passed in 1991, but we didn't get three votes uh, of passage until 1992. And the proclamation uh, wouldn't even get on the Board of Supervisors agenda without the Commission of Status of Women. Uh, Karen Callahan and, and I had a scripted, thank you, Karen Callahan, for scripting this and we did a presentation to the Commission on the Status of Women and they helped get us on the agenda in 1988. Would not get a supervisor who was willing to put us on the agenda in 87. Um, and 88, we got the Commission of S Status of Women's support and they took it to the next level. And after that, we had Ernie Carpenter who would put it on the agenda on behalf of our community, even if it didn't vote, get voted. This picture you see here is 1990. And in 1990, we didn't get it on the agenda for whatever reasons. So I, on behalf of the community, in proclaiming Pride uh, Week, uh, and in the back of the photo is uh, people holding the banner for Pride Week. And um, you can see a few of the audience members, but. It was a very unifying, uh, in usually May or, or early June, we would do this. Next slide. The first uh, celebration, uh, this was in June of 87, and we wanted it to be in an open uh, area, the jackrabbit area of Spring Lake. And so that started a trend. Uh, I can't remember, uh, uh, Steve Clark or somebody was the one who said, let's do it at Spring Lake. And so we did at Spring Lake in this open, beautiful jackrabbit area. Uh, we filled up more than we expected. There was anywhere from 250 to 300 people coming and going that day. It was awesome. The next year we surpassed that and we filled the parking lot and we had people coming into uh, Jackrabbit area in truckloads and emptying the trucks and moving on. In 88, we had a huge pink triangle stage. We had theater, dip me and honey. We had awesome, uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, thank you, Jim Spar, for bringing the San Francisco marching band to Spring Lake Park. Um, and oh my gosh, the the creativity, the diversity of our community was in full display. The parks people uh, said, "Okay, wonderful." Um, so we overflowed there, and we had to go to other parks in the future. The Pride celebration celebration evolved. Uh, into a joint effort of the uh, parade that came a few years later and uh, the celebration meeting up and flowing seamlessly from uh, City Hall to Santa Rosa Junior College campus. And, uh, and then ultimately in today's world, we had this huge best party in Northern California by our current um, Pride Committee that uh, does the celebration downtown Santa Rosa, take the plaza, march through uh, the streets and parade uh, and show our stuff and our diversity. Um, next slide. October 11th, uh, Adam, I believe that's yours. So October 11th, 1987 was the second National March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights. Um, 
And um, it, it, again, as you can see, this poster emphasizes come out, come out. Um, still a major theme for the, the community. Um, and uh, there were three main political issues that were starting to take shape. Um, the, in, what's not listed here is increased AIDS funding. Um, lesbian and gay bisexuals in the military. Um, so that, that was really taking on um, a force of its own. Uh, service members were really challenging. Uh, you know, the, you know the, the Army and Navy and Air Force and Marines on these um, expulsions and questionings and uh, things like that. Um, we also had a big effort on domestic partnership. Gay marriage was not necessarily on the um, horizon then. It was kind of thought that that would never happen. And then just in general, um, the, the idea of LGBT rights as human rights, really, um, you know, just in general, that's, that's what happened. As I recall, there were a quarter million people at this one. Um, so this, this really got bigger and deeper, um, you know, as a, as a national event. And uh, so I'll just uh, stop there. Um, the next slide is, is you, Magi. That is the banner that Leslie Scanagata and I painted, uh, and we painted it for the Pride uh, celebration in 1987. We hung it up in one of those lovely oak trees. And then uh, the people were going to march on Washington in October said, we want that. Uh, we had so many groups of people who went to this national wash, uh, march on Washington. And they uh, wanted to take and carry this banner. And they gave me these pictures, compliments of uh, Karen Callahan. And in Sonoma County that day, there was a party uh, at uh, the Veterans Building uh, uh, on the spiritual group or, uh, hosted by Shari, Shari Davidson. Uh, Leslie Scanagata had a party at her house. Um, uh, there were local uh, community things for those of us who could not attend uh, the March on Washington in 1987. Next slide. Adam? Okay, yeah, I'm here. Um, but then um, at the 1987 um, March on Washington, the uh, AIDS, you know, AIDS was just uh, in 87, you know, in, in 87 and for years after that, an AIDS diagnosis was um, almost surely a death sentence. Uh, there really weren't effective treatments for it. And um, we, as a community um, started to memorialize the uh, deaths of um, mostly gay men um, by making quilt panels. And so this was the unfurling of these uh, uh, panels of approximately 2000 um, at this event. Um, as you can, and it, uh, the names of each, each person was uh, announced. There was quite a ceremony for the unfurling of each of these uh, panels, and it really became an emotional uh, lightning rod of the amount of grief and uh, tragedy that was uh, befalling our community. Um, and it was a proactive way to express um, our community, uh, you know, reaction, because we were being attacked constantly behind AIDS. Um, and, and certainly, um, you know, it had a homophobic quality specifically. Um, they did not care if we lived or died. And we, the reality of that death, uh, of those deaths in the NAMES project. Um, it also came to Sonoma County um, as well, and that was uh, quite a uh, electrifying experience as well. That was at the fairgrounds. Okay. So, Magi, you're up. We the People is amazing. I cannot give credit to all the people who made um, uh, 
contributions, wrote articles. The photography was world-class photography. We had internationally known photographers, uh, uh, Cheryl Trenley, uh, Janet Segoya. We had uh, writers in, in the new phases of writing. We had experienced writers. We had people communicating and sharing what was going on in the community um, and, and being uh, at times uh, provocative in their thinking as in presenting different philosophy, sharing with people what was going on, when it was going on. We the People was uh, a, a central clearinghouse for so many things. Um, so many people contributed money uh, to We the People. Uh, it started with a directory uh, by uh, Steve Clark, uh, of people to, who were open to our business. So uh, the We the People included friends, family, allies, and advocates advertised in there and paid for this publication that was free to anyone picked up. And there we have a picture of our veterans care group uh, marching on Sacramento back in uh, 1988. This is uh, the first issue of We the People. They, they were phenomenal, all the people who contributed uh, to making We the People uh, just phenomenal. Next slide. Adam? I keep uh, keeping myself mute, sorry. I, I usually uh, talk too much, so uh, shutting me up is uh, an occasional luxury. So in 1988, um, a number of uh, things happened in and around Forward Together and the Lesbian Voters Action Caucus. Um, I filled a position on the Democratic Central Committee um, that was vacant. And this was the first time that a, um, you know, a gay person openly served on the Democratic Central Committee. This did, this did not please the chairman of the uh, Central Committee, Bob Townsend, who's, you know, for those of you who are, have been around, um, you may not know this, but he actually resigned um, the Central Committee chair, which was unheard of. He'd been chair for something like 20 years because of my presence as a, uh, uh, you know, a gay person on the Central Committee. Um, he did not use a polite word in referring to me. Um, so it was a um, particularly horrible time for me personally in having to deal with this. Um, but I was determined. And one of the things that we came up with is this idea of a democratic club. There were lesbian and gay democratic clubs up and down uh, the coast, you know, California. There were three in San Francisco. There was at least one in LA. They were in San Diego and Fresno and in along the peninsula, I believe in San Mateo and San Jose and Oakland. And so this was one way to influence policy. Um, this did not, uh, just because today the Democratic Party is seen as being pro-gay or, uh, it, you know, in some way advancing the lesbian, gay, bi, and trans agenda, it does not mean that it always did. Everything was a fight. Um, no, no rights have ever been given uh, an oppressed minority freely. We upset the apple cart on both the left, the right, and the center. And um, it's just important to know that freedom is never free. Um, it is constant struggle. And uh, we decided to take on this role in the Democratic Party because most lesbian and gays, for the most part, identified as Democrats. And so we thought that this was an important uh, arena to fight in. So you can see me with hair, looking a little more cat, you know, Castro clonish on the left of this picture. And then there's Mike Raleigh and uh, Magi. And then in the second picture, I don't know these people as well because I left Sonoma County, but the woman uh, second to the right is Maddie Hirschfeld who became the uh, chair of the Democratic uh, Club. It's, uh, so another word about um, 
the Lesbian Voters Action Caucus has come up several times uh, in our presentation. And they were a voice for the lesbian feminist community in Sonoma County. Um, and their, their influence in organizing um, can't be understated. They were very tight. They had a very um, committed um, following, you know, that was bigger than themselves. They were known in the community. They did a number of things uh, by issuing recommendations, um, flyer every year where they would take on the candidates and ask questions and make recommendations, uh, which was uh, one important voice in political um, organizing in Sonoma County. Um, they were a female only organization and um, their all work with um, both gay, lesbian and other you know, men in, in campaigns like on the uh, Scrap 64. They were formed in the early eighties and they were also kind of around them was the Brown Bag Readers Theater, which was a, a recovery oriented um, readers theater uh, that really had a lot of um, represented uh, 12 step recovery uh, from alcoholism and the family disease of alcoholism um, in many, many different venues. Also was a Fat Lip Readers Theater, which was um, a, uh, you know, a, a movement that we don't even think about anymore, and that is fat liberation uh, against the discrimination of body size, um, especially in women. So um, go on to the next slide, and Maja, you're on. National Coming Out Day was a time nationally where people decided to be proactive on this whole coming out. Uh, and instead of reacting to another proposition or something like that. This started in California, Southern California area. Uh, they decided to do a campaign. Somebody gave me the literature on this. I love the National Coming Out uh, Day uh, bumper sticker here. And it was about taking your next step, taking all these people who have been living openly in Sonoma County. We lived open lives, and yet we still needed to keep the coming out uh, forever, <laughs> like the forever stamp. We need to keep coming out forever, um, wherever you are on the LGBTQI spectrum and our friends and our supporters. Um, so uh, this came out, next slide. So we in Sonoma County thought, well, you know, we're living openly here. A lot of people live openly. We didn't want to go just coming out day. We couldn't do it on the, the day of October 11th. We got another date. Um, Leslie Scanagata was a key person. We asked people to wear their memorabilia, bring their memorabilia, give us their memorabilia, and we will give it back. This had a history aspect of it. People came to this. Um, it was held at the Unitarian Universalist Church. We had uh, the video of Scrap 6. We had uh, a slideshow. Uh, many thanks to Janet Zagoria. She was absolutely critical with giving us slides during this time and help facilitating that hap. Uh, Cheryl Trenley uh, also uh, gave us uh, photos. Uh, people brought newspapers. They brought um, buttons, they brought miscellaneous uh, items. And then when we were showing the slides, people stood up and told their stories. They wanted to tell what happened with all the various groups and activities that they had been living openly for a long time. So you'll notice the name here is Coming Out 88 Celebration. Um, and it's not, about one day in our lives. It's an ongoing, like the forever stamp. Um, next slide. We the people image. Uh, Janet Zagoria, uh, uh, this is from We the People. Uh, uh, and we have uh, surpassed any of our expectations. We believe a hundred people either contributed, were present, or were represented uh, in this day. 
with uh, their stories. It was far beyond anything we expected. We talked about archives when we were developing this memorabilia day, and yet um, it was not the time, uh, the energy. We had too many fights, too much else going on. And so next slide. Okay, so we have a little bit of time. We're running uh, a little late. We have a few minutes. If uh, people have um, questions, if you could um, raise your hands and we'll, um, we'll try to get them, get to them. Um, so um, does anyone have any questions or comments at this point? And you're also welcome to use the chat, by the way, in case you can't use your mic. I'll, I can read out your question for you. Um, to start off, though, I would really love to ask both you, uh, Adam and Magi, like, I guess, how, how did you have the, I don't know, the courage to be so out during those times? You know, I, I came out when I was 21 in like 2012. Even then I was afraid. Like the idea of being out in the 80s for me would have been quite a lot. I don't know if anything helped you or if there was the goal of trying to advance, um, you know, LGBTQ rights, but what, what, what is it that drove you to be so out and open? Um, well, I'll answer for myself uh, first. And that's that, um, you know, I, um, you know, I came out in New Haven, Connecticut, and uh, there was a, I, I got involved with an organization uh, called the Gay Alliance at Yale. I was not a Yale student, but I was exposed to um, that group as well as the Gay Liberation Front in the late, in the mid uh, 70s. It was, very, it was a very radical um, uh, gay liberationist point of view. Um, I was exposed to individuals around that and I was exposed to um, men and women who were very forthright in their sexual orientation. So they gave me some confidence. Um, and then going to the National March on Washington uh, really solidified um, you know, a sensibility of a, a political identity. Uh, but we got threats, Magi certainly got threats, um, got hate mail. Um, Magi can speak to her experience. Magi? I agree with Adam, it was people. It was the supportive uh, people who made it possible not only to come out, all the people who came out and lived their lives openly that I met, the more open I saw other people be, the more open uh, we could be. So by 1987 and forward together, there were open people who role modeled to me. And I also felt supported by uh, allies and advocates. Um, I was 19. I married a non-binary woman at Glide Memorial uh, Church. There we have Cecil William and his wife marrying me to a non-binary woman. And we, uh, I had my two older sisters from Santa Rosa there at that um, service. Um, so it was all of that. And it, when you come out that way, why would you ever go back? You would, you would live your life openly um, from that point on, I would hope. And even, even with the death threats and my car window bashed in and the, um, the lock and the, silica, the, the weird letters for, for probably a decade after some of my activism, I would still get letters coming into my PO box. So that's just what you did. And I'm very fortunate to have had so many wonderful people in my life who were supportive. I'm very fortunate for um, the police department to, for being uh, responsive. <laughs> I'm very uh, appreciative of the people who um, are, are still here side by side with us and the people who are moving forward into the future and with uh, living their lives openly. So we only have a few minutes left. Um, unless there's another compelling question, um, I think we should move on and talk about some of our, the last things that we wanted to bring up. Um, and that's, um, that's uh, we also wanted to do a shout out to the Lesbian Archives of Sonoma County 
Um, Tina is involved in that and they have very creatively uh, put together uh, oral histories and videos uh, of you know, the, the lesbian and women's community experience in Sonoma County. And uh, that those have recently, those tapes uh, and other materials have recently been donated to the uh, uh, Gay, Lesbian, Bi and Trans Historical Society Cisco. So that's, um, that's a major effort to have gotten that. Um, we can talk a little bit more um, about that in a second. Uh, Tina, is there anything you wanted to add to this? Um, no, I, th I think that we should, in the spirit of getting through all the other slides, we should go forward. Okay. But thank you for doing that. Sure. So Magi, you're on. Uh, in the interest of going forward, I think you've got it. We're interested in our archiving as a community. Uh, we believe this is the time. Uh, we want our collection safeguarded and we want it accessible. We want when they're doing this curriculum, when they're doing events at the county library or the the, the colleges or anywhere in the community, we want it accessible. We want somebody to see the documents that we've been referring to. And we would also like people to contribute uh, documents that are um, in their closets, in their storage unit, wherever they are, come out, come out with your documents, please. Magi? Wish list. We have some wish list items. Um, one of my... Uh, things on this list is um, more access to existing collections. So if you know of collections, uh, type it into the chat, uh, communicate uh, to us of any other collections. Would love to see, uh, instead of going to the library and sharing a book, if maybe we could have a uh, share a person, uh, share an LGBTQI plus uh, person, a non-binary person, whatever, share with us. Um, uh, your personal um, memorabilia pictures. We're, we're, we want to know if you have some that are in better shape than what we have. Uh, and then if you have stuff that we don't have, we're very interested in that. And um, maybe having a, a weekly or a monthly form where people share what they have so that we, we could, if we don't tell our stories, nobody else is going to tell them for us. Okay, so uh, real quickly, there's a few things that we just wanted to mention um, out there. There is Outwatch, Sonoma County's uh, LGBTQI Film Festival that is uh, curated by Shad Reinstein, who uh, I mentioned earlier. And uh, that's an annual event. It happens around uh, Pride Month, as I recall, in June. Then there, there are two, um, classes at the junior college that are worth considering. They're both part of the um, older adults program. One is aging gayfully, and that's taught by Gary Buzz Hermes. So um, that's something to, um, to take into consideration. And then um, Tina, who we keep referring to, um, has been a real leader in creating a class um, about LGBTQI, um, you know, uh, you know, history. I've participated in it. Shad's participated in it. Magi's participated in it. Many people um, have participated in this, talking about some controversial issues, about trans issues, talking about um, bisexuality in the community, talking about. Um, you know, the political divisions that have happened in the past or cultural divisions. Anyway, it's very, um, it's very it's stimulating and I encourage you to give it. Um, and tomorrow so, we're going to be dealing with Brown Bag Readers Theater. Oh, yeah. uh, more depth level, so. so. So I'd like to just put one plug in for that. Um, after 10 years of Brown Bag Readers Theater, which is the recovery theater, um, I was on... Um, they, they admitted three males into one performance at the Reader's Theater, and I was one of them. Um, so that was a special treat, and I think there's going to be a photo of me with blonde hair uh, in, that, uh, in that. So you can see me, A, with hair, and B, blonde hair. Um, the other resource that I want to mention is um, the timeline. I referenced it earlier. 
Here's a picture of it. Um, Tina and Shad have been instrumental in that as well. Um, I'm gonna put um, my email uh, in, the, um, in the chat. So if you have any comments or feedback or questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, here it is. There we go. So, um, so we are, it is 6.33, so we're gonna have to wrap it up here. Um, I really wanna thank the library for making this space available. And I believe uh, Javier Morales has uh, some, some comments here at this point. Well, One more thank something. you. Thank you for all of you for participating today. Um, thank you for your participation. Um, and that's so precious. Definitely. And I, I just want to say thank you, Adam and Matt, I so much for taking the time to share your expertise of Sonoma County queer history. It definitely, I'm fairly new to the county. I've only been living here for about two years, just about. And it's so wonderful to learn about how rich this county is with queer activism and all the beautiful people that have made it what it is today.